Welcome to National Arts. I'm Mike Baker. On this program, we'll meet Rasta Thomas, one of the up-and-coming young classical dancers in America today. But first, the diversity of Pablo Picasso's formative years from 1892 through the fall and winter of 1906 is unprecedented. On this program, we'll visit the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., and take a look at Picasso, the early years, an unparalleled exhibition which will both enlighten and entertain. A number of exhibitions in the past have treated various aspects of the early career, but this is the first show that uh, represents a complete survey of the early career as we've defined it from the very beginning through late 1906. I'm exceedingly impressed with the diversity of the type of art that we see in this brief period of time. It's true. Um, I think that's one thing that stands out. Um, early Picasso is represented by a tremendous amount of um, stylistic experimentation, a kind of restlessness that I think is, um, is infectious as you go through the show. You, you watch Picasso move from one thing to another in a very rapid way. Um, but in some respects, that represents Picasso's personality uh, as he um, applied it to his art um, in, in a way that would uh, continue throughout his career. So in, in, that, in that regard, the early career sets a pattern for the later career. Picasso's early academic efforts apparently had some profound influence on the way he was going to move in the art world, didn't it? What Picasso learned in art school, uh, above all, was that he was a gifted draftsman. Um, drawing was a very important aspect of Picasso's art throughout his career, and in some respects we can trace that back to his art student years, both working with his father and studying in other academies throughout Spain. Uh, I would emphasize drawing in particular as a, as a crucial element in Picasso's early work. If one were to look at a common thread all the way from the beginning to the end, would it not be the figure? Absolutely. Uh, Picasso did not uh, uh, devote much attention to the landscape or to still light painting, uh, although those two things would become much more important to him during Cubism. Uh, it's the figure, the portrait, and the figure in general that, uh, that stands apart as Picasso's primary subject. How does the old fisherman fit into the portraiture? Well, it's a case of Picasso working in um, the tradition of Spanish genre and Spanish realism, partly inherited from the old masters of Spain, such as Ribera, which this picture somewhat resembles. Um, and uh, as far as portraiture per se is concerned, um, this figure was a, uh, an old fisherman who was hired by Picasso's uncle in Malaga to pose for young Picasso. Um, Picasso got a lot of support uh, from his family in his art, and uh, they would frequently hire models for him and encourage him in other ways. It's clear that he really does love the figure. Very much so, and, and uh, while Picasso paints landscapes and still lifes uh, during this period and throughout his life, it's the figure that uh, certainly stands apart for him. I think Picasso's subjects um, were important to him in, in ways that were often emotional or psychological, and the human figure is the best vehicle for that kind of interest um, in one's work. Um, I think Picasso was always interested in, con in confronting the figure and uh, seeing in many people a reflection of himself. There are many self-portraits, but we can also say Picasso projected himself onto others as well. Um, that's something that uh, comes up again and again in his work. Is it safe to say that, that the Catalan society really remained almost in the fore all the way through this early period, like to 1905, as late as that? I would say that the, the period is broken up between two things, between the Catalan influence and uh, Picasso's encounters in Paris. Um, but it is true that um, when he feels the need for a change, um, and he's in Paris in 1906, um, he's, he's settled there for two years by that time, um, he wants to get away from the city, um, and when he does get away, he, at that point, he goes to Spain, back to Spain, and not to somewhere in France, which he would later do. Um, and I think in, in that regard, Spanish culture in, in, in general uh, had an enormous uh, shaping influence on his work. In this case, we see him painting in the style of um, Spanish genre painting, Spanish realism, which was common in Spain in the 19th century, and which was something that Picasso also inherited by being Spanish. And uh, what characterizes that style uh, is a certain palette that's based mostly on grays and browns, although this red dress is, um, is quite striking in that, in that setting. Uh, and also the emphasis on figures drawn from largely the um, lower class or peasant class, so to speak, uh, which Picasso would uh, be interested in uh, throughout the early period. And we know that in the blue period, of course, the subject matter is, is quite the same. Jeffrey Picasso certainly moved through a variety of social circles, didn't he? 
Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is portrayed in a loving fashion, but it's clear that he has comfort uh, with the aristocracy and the more upscale individual. Sure. Well, Picasso, um, when he arrived in Paris in 1900 for the first time, encountered uh, various uh, milieu, especially uh, occupying Parisian nightlife. And Picasso certainly picks up on that, um, partly from what he saw and also from the work of other artists. And he's working in the style of other artists during this period, of many other artists, including Toulouse-Lautrec, which this picture, I think, somewhat recalls. Jeffrey, 14th of July, Bastille Day. I get the feeling this is almost implosive as well as explosive, all the activity and, and energized motion. Well, it's true. Um, Picasso really captures um, with, almost with the way he applies the paint in this case, um, the, the explosive, uh, active, vital quality of a public street festival. Um, in addition, given that it's Bastille Day, you can see that the palette is largely the uh, French tricolor or um, red, white, and blue, blue, white, and red, I should say. The figurative paintings at times went a little afield into something like neo-impressionism, and then as you indicated, they had a tendency to come back periodically. Um, yes, well, Picasso's uh, stylistic um, shifts during the period are fairly noticeable. Neo-impressionism is certainly one of the, um, the tendencies in post-impressionist painting that Picasso um, would use in his work. Um, and it is also true that a lot of styles that Picasso uh, would adapt and then seemingly discard um, do represent um, uh, languages that he would draw on later. So it's not just a, fact, a function of his having moved through something and left it behind so much as uh, having stored elements of it that he could use at a later time. And throughout the show we see that of um, aspects of, of things that he's already done reappear in his work. Jeffrey, is this Picasso's uh, contribution to the Impressionist on the Seine? Yes, <laughs> very much so. It actually does represent a scene um, on the Seine of the top of an omnibus, which was a horse-drawn mm -hmm. coach. And we have a, a sort of slice of Parisian society riding um, along the, uh, the quay, or perhaps on a bridge going over the river. But it's also an image of Parisian leisure, which is something that Picasso derived from Impressionist and Post-Impressionist painting. And it contrasts very strongly with the, uh, the dark, seamy underside of Parisian nightlife that Picasso was also painting at this time. He was also very associated with the French avant-garde and things like Le Tub, which people indicate is one of the earliest examples of the Blue Period. What is the Blue Period? Good question. Um, it's a, certainly a, um, a, a kind of more difficult phenomenon than, um, than we sometimes want to give it credit for. Um, certainly difficult to define, although simply speaking, it represents a, a period in Picasso's work in which he painted predominantly in blue, um, subjects largely drawn from the urban underclass, and it reflects in part Picasso's having created in his work a whole other world uh, that is separate from the world that we have physical contact with. It almost seems to occupy another state, um, a spiritual one, if you will. Uh, Jeffrey and Blind Man's Meal, are we seeing a little deprivation here, perhaps uh, a hint of starvation? Well, uh, more than a hint, I would say that this is one of the most powerful uh, examples from the Blue Period of uh, Picasso working with the theme of deprivation and destitution and, and melancholy um, in relation to um, the uh, social and economic underclass in Paris and Barcelona. Picasso idealizes his figure with proportions that are attenuated, um, somewhat uh, derived from El Greco, a Spanish old master that meant a great deal to Picasso. And he casts them in this half-lit blue world. It's almost a, a realm that's uh, separate from, um, from the physical realm. It's as if it's a spiritual world. Because of the blue palette, there is no escape, is there? No, it's very much a kind of haunting gloom that, that characterizes all blue period painting. Again, two women at a bar, a sense of perhaps desperation? I think so, yes. Um, and this is uh, especially powerful in that respect because it shows these two women from the back, um, those strong, powerful backs, uh, which emphasize um, their um, anonymity in a way. The fact that they're faceless um, sufferers is uh, especially compelling. Um, these depictions of, of backs come up a lot during the Blue Period, nowhere uh, as uh, powerfully as in, as in this picture. Um, and it's uh, shows Picasso in part, I think, working in an almost sculptural fashion. Um, and I think there's a certain resemblance here to the work of Rodin. During the last few months uh, in his second visit to Paris, apparently he was rather distressed to learn of the death 
of a friend. And he actually depicted the death, the burial, the suicide, the whole business in, in four different works. And you have actually reunited them for the first time since Picasso actually painted them. Yes, we're, we're very proud of the fact that, uh, that in the show we have um, four works, including all three portraits um, associated with the suicide of his friend Casa Hamas, who was a, uh, an artist who uh, Picasso knew very well uh, during his uh, years uh, in Barcelona. Um, Casa Hamas uh, shot himself in the temple and it had an enormous uh, influence on his work, we think, and Picasso always traced the beginnings of the Blue Period back to his paintings that commemorate this event. In this particular piece, is Picasso trying to show the relationship that he had, perhaps, with a variety of different levels of life? I think so. It's the funeral of Casa Hamas, and it shows uh, the, um, the dead artist uh, laid out uh, in the lower half, uh, with, surrounded by mourners. And it's based, the composition is based loosely on El Greco's burial of Count Orgaz, um, which has two tiers, a, an, an earthly tier and a heavenly tier. Um, and in Picasso's case, uh, there's an ascension scene with Casa Hamas on a white horse. Although, um, and this is an interesting aspect of Picasso's work that we often neglect, even during the Blue Period with themes of uh, melancholy uh, and depression, uh, Picasso was always uh, working um, with a comic or satiric edge um, in, in other images, um, sometimes in caricatures, but in this case in a painting, uh, because uh, we know that uh, this uh, ascension scene also includes prostitutes from a Montmartre bordello, which is a sort of um, allusion to uh, the sexual problems that his friend uh, had and which may have precipitated his suicide. In 1904, Picasso <coughs> left Barcelona for the last time and returned to Paris. Mm -hmm. There was a dramatic change there, too, because all of a sudden we see these circus subjects. Where did that influence come from? Well, um, I think that in part those subjects were available to Picasso, um, especially in poetry of the period. Um, uh, Verlain, uh, Rimbaud, and other French poets used the circus and the, um, the fairground as a, um, as a place um, in their work to represent uh, another version of the, um, the margins of society. In this case, Picasso um, was interested in fairground performers in particular because they lived on the margin, but they were also artists living on the margin. So in that regard, there's a con continuity with the early, uh, with the blue period, uh, in which Picasso's already working with uh, this idea of society's dispossessed. But now in the rose period, he's changed his subject to include, or to focus almost exclusively on, um, on performing artists who belong to that larger world. But in this case, uh, Picasso is uh, focusing on a group of, um, of artists, performing artists, but artists with whom he, as an artist, also identified. With the new x-ray technology, you're able to perceive so much and kind of get a feel for where Picasso was heading with the work. There apparently are two different versions under this. Yes, there are. Uh, we, we have found with x-rays and infrared reflectography that there are uh, several previous versions to this composition which lurk beneath the final version um, and show Picasso uh, changing his group and, and the identity of his figures um, in, in various stages. The return to Paris in 1906 Picasso began to plot out new strategies of figure painting. Cubism was right around the corner. Does anybody ever put their finger on that particular moment when something happened in his life? Well, I think the changes that occur in Picasso's work in 1906 um, first uh, come upon him in Gosel, the Spanish village in the Pyrenees that he visited in the summer of 1906 with his companion, Fernand where he was um, overwhelmed, in a way, by this community existing apart from the modern world, a kind of primitive, archaic, classical community uh, that occupied this uh, sun-baked Arcadia in the middle of the, uh, of the, the red clay mountains of that, of that area. It was something that left an enormous impression on Picasso. Um, he brought that uh, back with him to Paris, the work and also the concept um, of a more, uh, well, a more conceptual approach to the human figure. Um, that emerged for the first time in Gosel, a new conception of the human face and the human body, which um, is uh, a short step, a threshold, so to speak, to what would happen next, the radical break that's represented by Cubism. This painting uh, dates from the period following Picasso's trip to Gosel, where his uh, work had developed a certain kind of archaic monumental quality based partly on sculpture. And Picasso uh, carries that into his work during late 1906, uh, which is really the eve of Cubism. Uh, at this point, um, the figures have um, 
uh, attained a kind of commanding monumentality. There's a great girth to these women um, that is uh, bold and powerful uh, in a way that Picasso's figures had never been before. Um, but at the same time, there's a, um, there's a, a new conceptual approach to the face and the body. Picasso is abstracting certain elements to, to a degree, and he's allowing himself to reconfigure the body. Um, in particular, uh, certain elements of, of torsion and compression create uh, things that we might think of as distortions, effects that, that are kind of distorting in a way, but that also represent a new flexibility in the representation of the body that Picasso will work with um, very intensely in 1907 and, and beyond. We like to think of the show and of the early career as a story unto itself that doesn't just represent the prelude to something else. It's true Picasso really transformed the history of art with Cubism, but the early career is um, a remarkable odyssey of, of a kind and um, something that uh, seems to have an arc in a way. It begins with Picasso's student years and it, um, it reaches uh, a, a, a culmination during the Blue and Rose period uh, where Picasso finds his own artistic identity for the first time and comes to a really monumental kind of conclusion with those heavy, weighty, uh, monumental, sculptural-like um, nudes of, of Gozel and of late 1906. At that point, I think Picasso reaches a sort of stopping point uh, before he crosses into the next thing.